Archetype is an architectural practice that not only believes in designing good buildings, but by designing those to be very sustainable and designing those through a really participatory process. One of the things that we do with our approach to design is to make it really ecological and green and sustainable, and that's what we're doing with your new school. We have a very collaborative, open way of working, and I think partly that's why we're good at doing that with user clients, because we're doing that with ourselves all the time. We're all working on studio space, uh, there's a lot of design dialogue, really design discussion it happens all the time in everything we're doing. So there's a lot of open working and a real passion for working in that sort of way. We're looking to make a comfortable environment, but an inspiring environment for our occupants. So it's vital that we you know, deliver the buildings as we say we will, which should give you know, these buildings that work, have a good functionality. We do buildings all over the place. Um, so we've got these where we're here, we're doing your school in Wolverhampton, we've done a school in Bristol, we do work in London. So. Personally, I don't think that it's okay for architects just to take a brief and design. They really need to talk to, to listen, to engage and take the user of the building on a journey of discovery with us, out of which we develop and shape a building. I mean, for me and for Archetype, inclusive design uh, is not just about meeting the technical requirements of access for everybody, whatever their abilities. It's really about including people in the process of design so that they become part of the building. And from our point of view as architects, the building that comes out of an inclusive process generally is a better building, very much rooted in the ideas and dreams and aspirations of the people that are going to use the building. So inclusive design is about including people in the process as well as making the building accessible to people. Do you enjoy doing the job? I do, yeah. Actually, the thing that I think we all enjoy most of all is designing school buildings and meeting people like you uh, before we're building, then seeing, coming back and seeing you using the buildings. We often find some very tangible examples of how uh, things have happened in a building, which unless we talk to people and involve them in the building, they just wouldn't have been there. Uh, so for example, on the new school and children's centre that we did in Bristol, there's a very big Somali population, and one of the things that came out of talking to people was a requirement to have a foot bath so that before people pray, a foot Muslim prayer, they can wash their feet and then pray. And then a lot of thought had to go into actually getting that right. So quite technical, detailed stuff. Another example on a school we're developing in Wolverhampton at St Luke's. The school there has a very open, creative way of working. So we've basically eliminated corridors and such like that you'd normally have in a school to access different parts and brought that all in together with some other shared facilities into a hub, which unless we talked to them and involved them and really started to understand how the school ticked and how they operated, we wouldn't have really been able to get that into the building. We wouldn't have known about it even. The project that I joined to work architect for was the Widows School, being a combined special needs school with a primary school and a community element. It has a particular responsibility to be a highly inclusive and accessible building. In terms of the early briefing, we wanted to go beyond just accommodating structure for hoists. We wanted to make it look like it was actually fundamentally part of the design so you wouldn't particularly notice the difference between going into a classroom which is the primary school and the green park which is the special school we wanted a kind of an equivalent so the structure is kind of equivalent but it allows the easy fit out of tracking for hoists therefore making less distinction between these spaces. You know, just because the children have special needs doesn't mean it should be institutionalized and should look like a hospital or somewhere it shouldn't the Green Park half of the school shouldn't look any different from the Stolong half of the school. You know, there's no difference between the children in terms of their environment. One of the issues that was drawn to our attention was the fact that angularity can be a problem for some children with autism. And we then looked at the idea of generating more curvilinear, flowing type spaces, which would help with kind of mobility and invite better mobility. Because the curved corners give much better visibility and give a more kind of flowing space. So that was something that we battled for relatively early on in the design. And we've had to, we fought to kind of keep it in despite the kind of extra cost and the complexity that that's put into the building. It's become part of the sort of design strategy for the building is to have these kind of flowing curvilinear spaces. A special school, generally you're expecting to kind of heat to slightly higher temperatures in some of the spaces and this can lead to extreme discomfort. And so we've looked in great detail with our heating and electrical engineer about how we can provide really good 
levels of ventilation. We're using heat exchange technology so we can provide a good flow of air. Otherwise, we're looking at cross ventilation, so you have access to openable windows, openable doors. The daylighting has been very carefully kind of considered to kind of create a, a general level of good, good daylighting, but controlled glare when you know, classrooms are facing south. We're using breeze soleil to kind of give them protection from glare. We're using triple glazed windows. We're using you know, the buildings super insulated, the 300 thick walls to kind of retain as much heat as possible to make it economic to run. We all thought air conditioning had got to be the way, but actually I think they've opened our minds to think that there are lots of other better ways to keep our children cool when they need to be calm, but also to protect their very vulnerable children with complex health difficulties and ensure that they've got rooms that are well ventilated but very warm for them. And so I think that flexibility, that adjustment across the campus is going to be quite important. It's probably even small things, you know, putting a cupboard in the right place so that it can be used by a teacher or it's putting the cupboard, you know, is it a cupboard that the children can reach so that they're, they're um, you know, they can get things from it or is it somewhere that actually needs to be more secure so it's higher up or it's got a special door handle. Um, I mean, one of the things with the Willows is, in fact, door handles is a really important part of, of where that's going in the whole school, who's, who's using this, who's getting from different places. Um, probably taps is another good example. In the Willows, there was a, when we did the consultation, the, the process of using a tap is actually quite an important learning experience for some of the children. So rather than just having one standard push button taps throughout the school, the idea is coming through that you know, some taps need to be twisting taps, you need to have some that are levers, some that are pushed, so that actually by progressing through the school and using the different facilities and the children are actually learning for different activities. Our staff toilets at the minute are at the front reception area. You might be completely the other end of school and it's going to take you five minutes to dash up, dash back. That's time when you really wanted to be with the kids. It's not very productive. The lovely design about the school that we have now is they're very inclusive toilets. They're strategically positioned so whether you're at the school pool, whether you're in the staff room, whether you're down in the reception area, everybody's got equal access. Having kind of formed these spaces, we're kind of inviting your kind of participation in how they're going to be completed. Because of the nature of the resource, having a, a clear wayfinding system is going to be very important. So it's been great to have worked with James as an artist who's particularly worked on aspects of wayfinding before. And he's looking to kind of establish a principle of symbols or or very recognisable sort of objects that could be used and kind of you know, have a very direct kind of meaning and will help provide kind of clues about finding ways to kind of key spaces like dining spaces like the PE halls, etc. But something like a lettuce where the little child came up with us, that as those leaves break away, they don't necessarily have to go in a kind of uniform mm -hmm. line. It becomes a very pleasurable visual trail that you go upon. It's important for anybody coming into the building to have a sort of clear sense of how to get around, but it's important for any child in the building to have confidence about getting from one space to another, feeling at home in the building, not feeling intimidated by the building, having fun in the building.